Hey there, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Falcon Blues TV. It's your boy Sachin here, the American commentator for a match reaction for Everton 1, Manchester United 3 at Goodison Park. And let's get right into it per usual um, with the lineup. So a lot of changes. Pickford comes back in for or Olsen. Holgate slots in for Keane. And there are two normal uh, fullbacks and uh, Dean and Coleman rejoin. The fray, and then for the midfield, the usual partnership of Ducure Allen, and then Sig comes in for uh, Gomez, and then you have Bernard, Dom, and James leading the line. And strong lineup, I was happy with it. Very good to see Luca and, and Shamey back because they've been really solid for us, and as we all know, they are a huge factor in possession in the final third and creating chances. So I was happy to see them back. Little worried about Holgate. Hadn't played since that Preston preseason match and getting your first start of the year against Man United with Martial, Rashford. I thought Greenwood would play, but he didn't. But and those so I mean that's a lot of pace right there with just those two and not even Greenwood. So I was a little worried. Um, and then Sigurdsson for Gomez, I mean, what are you going to do? Who else are you going to put there? Maybe it will be. So whatever, I'm not going to comment on that shit. Screw it. Um, Bernard over Gordon, kind of a baffler for that one. Gordon, Gordon doesn't even make the, make the, the team. He's completely out of the 18, so really worrisome there. I saw that Carlos said they talked and they joked or whatnot before midweek. But I'm kind of baffled that that he doesn't get included when, especially when you have Cheng Tosin on the bench and and then coming on. Um, so that was a question mark. But Bernard gets a goal and Bernard played well, so you know I'm glad he took his chance. And then James, you know, obviously will always be playing if he's fit. And then Dom, same. The match, you know, I thought I thought we started off well. This is, I think, the worst Man United team in a long time, even worse than the Moyes teams or the Van Hall teams, you know. I just think this team, like, Ole changed the tactics, the shape, and the personnel again yesterday. Like, he clearly has no clue what's going on with them. And and that double pivot of McTominay, I don't think it was Matic. They had another, or Fred, I don't know. I just I just thought they were there for the taking, and they were. You saw, you know, we scored the first goal 19 minutes in. Great take by Dom, who, by the way, dominated in the air yesterday. He won. Oh. I think I just want before I comment on the goal. I just think that was so frustrating because Dom was dominating their center backs and winning every ball. And if you had Richie there, Richie would be flying in, you know, making those runs. And I think Gordon would be making those runs too. You know, he Gordon could be, you know, that that second striker and and play off Dom as that target man. And because Gordon has the pace, I think Gordon has the ability to be direct and drive at players. So I thought that could have been a huge opportunity because our first goal, you know, Dom takes it, easy headed win. Bernard comes down with it, boom. De Gea should have done better, but good goal for Bernard, 1-0 up. We started off bright. I'm like, good, that's exactly what we needed. And Everton that, per usual, same old shit. Two terrible, terrible goals. And I think those goals come down to Holgate not being ready because those are center backs Keenan Holgate for the first one for Bruno's head, they parted like the red fucking sea. Like, I don't understand. Well, first, Seamus should have done better to close down Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw played better than he ever should have, so maybe Seamus wasn't also fit because Seamus didn't close him down. Good ball in from Luke Shaw, but the only thing he can do. And Bruno, unmarked, six, seven yards out, of course he's going to finish that one. You know, he's a he's a dirty diving rat, but at least he's a good dirty diving rat. He's always going to bury that. No chance to Pickford. And that was, that is schoolboy defending. I was frustrated, especially five minutes after, you know what? We can't keep a clean sheet. So, I mean, that that's poor. That goal should never, never, never be conceded by us. And then, lo and behold, five minutes later, the second thing happens. The same shit happens again with, with Rashford. He doesn't touch it and Bruno gets his second, but it doesn't matter. That's schoolboy defending, laughable, just basic things of communication, picking up the runner. Oh, and for the first goal, Gilfi points at Bruno and just doesn't go and pick him up. Like, mate, you may not be a defensive midfielder, but you're still a midfielder. So you got to do what you got to do. And whether that's in the final third, making a pass, or in the defensive third, tracking a run, you got to do it. You got to do it. Especially since we can't keep a clean sheet. Every player has to step up, you know? 
and and now it's eight wins without Richarlison and eight losses, and it just goes to show how vital he is. You know, tap tap an extra twenty thirty million on on his price tag. You know, if he don't make Champions League and he wants to leave, because he is immense from setting the tone, from leading the line, from tracking back. It's literally what can't this guy do? And he wills his team, he wills us, wills everybody out there to step up their game because he goes and goes all out. So thank thank God we have him back after the international break because. Yesterday was dreadful, dreadful, dreadful. And then I saw, you know, we go down 2-1. And our X, we have four shots on, on target there since then. And our XG of 0.22 when you're chasing the game at home. I know it's at home is kind of in quotes. But still, are we a top four team or not? I know we're fifth now, but Man United is dreadful. And that was poor, poor, poor. And I think, you know, a little bit has to do with the subs. Awobi? Hey, Awobi, I'll give him credit. He looked really good the last month or so. I thought he looked well yesterday, too. So, no qualm, qualms there. I mean, the qualm has to be with Cenk Tosin. I, I, I failed to see what he offers. He couldn't hit, like, three simple passes. I know that it was one was a simple pass out wide. Too hard. Another, it was a final third. Out wide again. Just, like, ten yards over. I forget who it was. I think it may have been Luca bombing down the left. And he has to stop his run and go retrieve it. Just simple, simple things. And it's like, why are you playing this this guy who has no hair midweek and then, you know, has a full head of hair on Sunday versus a 19-year-old lad who has a bag of potential? It's baffling. And I'm not going to sit here and say Ancelotti out. If you're, if you're saying that shit on my Twitter feed, I'll unfollow you. Because, and I'm sure most of the people saying that have seen, I mean, I've only been a fan for seven years, but you're telling me Ancelotti is worse than Allardyce, Kuman his second season, Silva... No, 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 no. Swerve those shots. You're getting unfollowed if you come at me with that bullshit. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you he got it right because he didn't. But he should not be out. I mean, if you want Ancelotti out, who's coming in? Nobody. Nobody. And we not, we're surely won't attract the likes of Hamas. You know, you know, the same kind of quality that he, he brings. If So those those Muppets and, and you know, Blues who are, who are saying that, please don't. Because that's a bad take. We're still fifth, even with three straight losses that we look poor. So... And that's football, though. That's football, though. I'm I'm heated because I think we deserved more, especially with Takure and the. That was probably the worst Takure match I've seen him play. Like first minutes of stoppage time, gets at the outside of the box. Like you're supposed to be our midfielder that gets forward the most, so aka the most composure in, in the final third. He doesn't take a touch. He just skies it. Worst technique I've seen. You know, knee is well. Uh, after the foot. So it's always going to go to Rosette. And then on their third goal, they score, you know, before, you know, the, the leading to the breakout or the counter was DeCourie inexplicably just missing the ball completely seven yards out. And I, I don't, I don't, I mean, maybe any other day he, he buries one of those or he at least gets him on target. But he, I, I can't, I, I have to criticize that. I have to criticize that because that is just simply not acceptable. Not acceptable. But, thankfully, you know, it's not the end of the world. We still have 13 points. We're still fifth. Could change, I know, with, with the fixtures because the table's so packed and a lot of parity this year. But, but you know, I think this international break we're only do is, we'll, we'll do is good because we get Richie back. Everyone gets a little thinner. Maybe Gabamine, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm at the point where we throw Gabamine when he's match fit into that third midfield spot. He cannot do worse than Gomez and Norris Sigurdsson, you know. Even if he's got no legs anymore after his two injuries, I mean, throw him in there. Might as well, because we've given everybody else so many chances and he's gotten, like, two. So, that's my thoughts. I mean, thankfully, Holgate will get better. That was a bad game from him. He will get better. We know We know he's... Oh, I want to comment on that, too. Because we ostensibly had Holgate in there for his pace or whatnot, because Keen's slow, or Mina's slow, excuse me. But if we have Holgate in there, why did we have the deepest line I think we've seen, as I've seen us play all year? We were so deep. So it made no sense to me about why we would drop deep, but include Holgate with the pace. So that was a baffling decision for me. I don't know, maybe it was one of those things that Carlo kind of got wrong and thought he was a little fitter, or Mason said he was fit when he wasn't, and you know, First time mentioned on the pitch, that becomes apparent. I don't know. And at that point, you don't want to waste a sub against Man U on, you know, a center back, which 
if, if he can if he can give it a go, which I mean I get that, but but that was that was wrong. A lot of things were wrong yesterday because that was a match there for the taking. Those are three points there that we should have taken, especially after our start. But Everton that, you know, summing up with that. Everton that. Thankfully, a couple weeks off. And we go again. And now it's the time where the fixtures get nitty gritty. And this is where the season's make or, made or break. Make or break time. So let's hope that, you know, we're fit. The mentality is good, you know. And, and I think it will be. I think it'll be better. Getting Richie back certainly helps. But yeah, I just hope that we can find some of that form that we did earlier on in the year and, and get three points again. And, you know, we play Man United again in the Carabao Cup on the 23rd of December. We'll have Richie back for that. We won't have... Oh, 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 oh. I didn't even mention Paul Tierney. I was going to, and I, I, and I have to. Baffling. One of the worst refereeing performances I've seen in a long time. That's saying something. How Bruno was still on the pitch beyond me. That... Studs the ankle into the studs into the ankle of Alan, the one right after where he flies in. He could have had four yellow cards. Such a disgrace. Such a disgrace. Um, to the integrity of the game for Paul Tierney, Muppet, Muppet of a referee. Really poor all around. I I don't I don't I do not I I physically don't understand how. How Bruno was still on the pitch. I I just don't understand it. Uh, he is a little rat. He's dirty. But I just want to comment on that. Now, I don't want to blame Paul Tierney for his losing. But, I mean, Bruno should have been sent off. Maguire very well could have been sent off for his tackle on Dean. Which, that pissed me off. That's one thing I want to say. Dom, no need to be upside there. You're one of the fastest strikers in the league. You know their center backs can't handle you. Give them, give them that extra half. It's like Theo being offside, you know, a couple years ago. It's like, why are you offside, dude? You're faster than everybody else. Just give them that extra half step, especially with now, with VAR. And you're still going to get there. And then if he does that, we get a penalty and Maguire gets sent off. So that was frustrating with me because those are the little margins, I think, in, in the full 90 minutes that go a long way. And it would have. It would have been a red card, Maguire, and a penalty. So those that's frustrating. That's something I think that... That was a that was a match changer. I still think Maguire should have been sent off, but at that same time, if I say that, you could argue that Pickford could have been sent off. A little bit different because Pickford was actually had was playing the ball and just went in there recklessly, while Maguire just two footed Dean, a little more reckless, I'd say. But I mean, there's similarities there. But uh, it's a load of shite, a load of shite after the twenty first twenty minutes. But. Hopefully we give them some payback in that Carabao Cup, which I think is more important since I want that trophy. And we go again after the international break. Enjoy next weekend off, Blues. Um, and until then, up the fucking toffees, Colin Chong.